All right, so um, now we have our aperture set for testing. We're going to do a test strip, um, almost the same as before. So I'm going to turn off my light. I'm going to pull out one of my test strips. I'm just using a paper test strip. I'm not going to be using an actual dark um, light sensitive test strip. And I'm going to lay this underneath. Um, so this is when you sort of decide what kind of test strip you want to use. Uh, whether you want to use one that goes horizontal or vertical. Uh, I'm going to turn the light on here just because this isn't light sensitive folks so if you are going to do this again put this back. You want to find an area of your print that has um, a lot of consistency to it so like we have this dark band going across here. Um, this may be a good spot but I also have this dark band right here as well or this band of information that stays consistent through the image. Um, so if I do my test strip over here um, this will give me reliable information all the way through my test strip. So I think we're going to use this right side. I can even probably use this middle side here where I have similar values going through the composition as well. So we'll do that. Turn it off. Put my contact strip. Alright. And just like before I'm going to do two second intervals. Now we don't have negatives to look at to give us a clear indication of where to start, so I'm just going to two seconds, shift, two seconds, shift, two seconds, and so on and so forth. Now when you're sliding your cardboard, make sure you're, you're nice and gentle that you don't move the paper underneath. I'm not applying any pressure, I'm just letting the weight of the cardboard fall onto itself. And then at the very end, two seconds all over. We're going to drop this into the into the bath uh, and we'll see you on the other side of the dark room. Alright folks, so here's that first test strip. I went ahead and made it the way we talked about it. So you can see here, this is the furthest away, so we can see our two, 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 two seconds all the way through. So uh, at the very bottom here, it's the lightest. Again, that's two seconds, then four seconds, six, eight, ten, twelve, so on and so forth. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for where the darkest areas just start to turn black. So I'm looking at the darkest regions now. So I feel like at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, I feel like the details at 10 seconds are just turning black. I don't want it to turn too dark that I lose the shadow details, but I don't want it to be too light either and I lose the highlight details. So I feel like 10 seconds is perfect. So as you can see, 8 seconds and f and 12 seconds are really different than 10 seconds. So this first test strip I call my broad test strip. I'm going to go back into the darkroom and I'm going to make a fine-tuned test strip that's going to include 8 through 12 seconds in it and I'm going to show you how to do that in just one second. Alright folks, so we know that about 10 seconds with our aperture where it is is a pretty good looking image uh, but pretty good isn't perfect. I want it to be look really good. I want to dial it into the very single seconds uh, because again I don't know if 8 seconds looks good. I don't know if 12 seconds look good. So we're gonna make a second test strip to do a fine-tuned test strip. So I'm gonna put another piece of darkened paper down here. This is just again a piece of computer paper just to stand in. So we know 10 seconds looks good so um, I'm gonna back it off a little bit to seven seconds, just a couple seconds underneath where I want to be, and I'm going to expose my test strip for seven seconds, letting the whole thing expose. So then now all of this has seven seconds on it. I'm going to pull up my cardboard, and I'm going to change my timer to one second, and I'm going to do one second intervals building off of that seven, so it'll be seven plus one, seven plus two, seven plus three, seven plus four, so on and so forth. So then that way I'm going to undershoot 10 and then I'm going to overshoot 10. So by the end of this I'll hopefully have an 8 second through 12 second 
test strip. Now I could go down in these really wide wedges again like what I did before, uh, but for this when I do a fine tune um, test strip I actually go vertical so I can see vertical strips so I can see the whole image going across what that looks like. So again we're going to start on the left side here. I'm just going to leave a little strip here. One second. So that would be eight seconds. This would be nine seconds. 10, 11, 12. All right, and I'm going to show you what, what that looks like now after we uh, do this with a real test strip. All right, folks, uh, so here we, we can see our first test strip here, which was, again, our, our broad test strip in two seconds. Then we see our new test strip here in single seconds, and it does range from eight seconds all the way on the far right side here to, um, 12 seconds on the far left side. So we thought 10 was pretty close. So we have 8, 9, 10. 10, I feel like it's just getting a little too dark in the darkest areas there. Um, so again, I'm looking where that black turns black, but I'm still holding on the details uh, in my shadow area. So I actually think 9 seconds looks really great. Um, and again, we're, we're, we're tuning it in to the very single second, so we have the best looking print uh, that we can that we can make. All right, so now we know that nine seconds that the aperture we have set looks perfect. We're going to do our first full eight by ten darkroom print. All right, folks. So we're going to make our final darkroom print. Um, as we've been doing with this, I'm just using some computer paper to stand in for my nice print. Um, but I'm going to pull this out just like before when we made our contact sheet. Make sure the glossy side is facing up. Now, when you put this paper into your easel, you want to be very careful to gently lift up from the front so that you don't shift your easel around. And then I'm going to, well this is a little bit big, but it, this will fit right underneath that lip, that red lip in there, it will catch it. So I can lie that down, lay that down, we'll have a nice, beautiful border. Set this for, we decided on nine seconds, looks really good. We're gonna expose it, we're gonna develop it as before, um, and we're gonna see what this looks like outside after we make the good print. All right, folks, and here we are. You know, for our first darkroom print, not too bad. We got a little bit of dust, but we have nice, beautiful, crisp borders here, right? No fuzzy edges, um, nice and square too. It's centered onto the paper. We have a pretty good looking image as well. Uh, we have mid-tones, we have highlights, we have shadows. Um, the areas that are in focus when we made the picture are very in focus here. They're nice, crisp, and clean. Um, now I would normally do a little bit of contrast control. I would get rid of some of these small areas of dust in there. Um, but for starting out, I'm pretty satisfied with this being my first darkroom print. Um, all right, so that looks pretty good. So again, in three test strips, right? We have a broad test strip. In two seconds, we have our, our fine-tuned test strip that goes to the single seconds to our darkroom print. Um, we didn't even use two whole sheets of paper to get here, right? We still have other test strips left from the sheet of paper. Um, these are great. So you should take this to your instructor um, or TA, ask them what they think, see what you can do to improve on them. Um, but if you're, if you're doing this well, um, you're on a great track for success in here. The last thing we have to do in the darkroom is we have to clean up um, our area and reset it for the next person after us. All right, folks, so the last thing we do when we're done, um, as our prints are washing and drying, I'm going to put them on the drying rack at the end of the day. Um, I want to reset my station for the next person that comes in after me. Uh, so the easiest thing we'll start off with is taking our easel and putting that back down below. Again, our uh, grain focuser should, should be back into its box in here. Please don't leave those things out. If we're using our cardboard and contact glass, I'm going to put that back in the cabinet over here. 
one thing people always forget to do um, is to make sure to turn off not just your darkroom timer, but also the enlarger as well. Um, it's really important to make sure that we turn off this power brick at the end of the day because there's always energy running through the enlarger head. It can easily burn out the electronics um, and it takes a really long time for us to get these repaired and fixed. And lastly, we don't want to forget our negatives, which is always the number one thing. So we're going to again, lift this up, pull this out. I don't need to go out to the darkroom, out into the light. I can do this right here in the darkroom. And we're gently leave the blue tape behind. Still in good condition. Put this back in. I'm going to put this back with my things and make sure to retrieve your paper. Um, now, in, I'm not going to open this up now, but um, with the red lights on and the door closed, I'm going to make sure to take all of my paper scraps that's left over, my test strips, put them in my black bag, fold them up into my box, and make sure to take them out with me. Uh, but because the white lights are on for videoing purposes, we can't do that now. But make sure to take everything out with you. Um, it's also really important, folks. Your paper is really expensive, as you know, and we're all using the same kind of paper, so it's important to write your name in Sharpie really large on who you are, who owns this box of paper, and what class you're into. All right, so the enlarger is off. I have my darkroom paper. I have my negative paper. Um, all the things are away. Um, lastly, uh, let your TA and instructor know. They're going, to, they're going to tell you how to sanitize the station uh, for the next person that comes in after you. All right. Hope you learned a lot today, folks. If you have any questions, uh, please let your instructor know, um, and we'll see you in the next video.